All right, like I said, I wanted to use this uh, ICOM radio as a teaching tool. So let's take a look at a circuit here. I think, I think these two circuits here are very interesting. This is the microphone connector, okay? So this is the microphone preamp, and it consists of basically two stages here. There's a first stage and there's a second stage. And this stage has a bunch of um, filtering on it to emphasize certain frequencies and, and de-emphasize other frequencies and stuff for, to minimize the noise and, and only, only amplify uh, voice uh, frequencies and not other types of frequencies. So uh, I'm going to simplify the circuit a bit when we talk about it, that basically uh, there is some extra stuff in here. Um, but it uses a, a front end that is basically one transistor followed by another transistor. We'll take a look at that. And then it goes into a second stage, okay? And uh, the second stage has three transistors in a really interesting configuration. So let's redraw these and uh, talk about them. Okay, here's the first one. Uh, it has DC biasing. We've talked about DC biasing to make the transistor go to its happy place. And... Um, then it has AC coupling, so it's an AC, an AC path. There's DC biasing and then an AC path. We talked about that before. And uh, so the first amplifier here is just a common emitter. And uh, there's some, like I said, some biasing, but basically the AC just goes through here. And you can see there's a bit of a trick at the bottom here. Uh, there is a DC path, but there's also an AC path. And you can see that the AC path goes to a very small resistor. So it's a 270 ohm. And this is a 2.2 K resistor. This is a 4.7 K resistor. So the DC path is quite large in resistance and the AC path is quite, um, quite small. So it basically allows us to uh, amplify more AC and not amplify the DC. Um, so that's just a little trick they put in here. And then we have some current gain here. Uh, we go from uh, this transistor uh, uh, pulling this transistor down. So this one is kind of an upside down emitter follower. And um, the uh, data comes out data. <laughs> the uh, signal comes out uh, again AC coupled. So AC coupled in, AC coupled out. And then we're going to run this through our um, uh, gain, right? So this is our microphone gain. How much volume do we want the microphone to have? And so there's a, a potent potentiometer here, and we get to pick, pick uh, how much signal do we want to go to the next stage, okay? And the next stage, uh, we'll, we'll say that a lot of times when you read schematics, there'll be multiple pages, and a lot of times they'll say, okay, there's, a, there's this signal, we're going to call it A, and it'll appear somewhere else in the schematic. Look, look for the A in a circle. Look, look for that, right? And so we're going to use that here. So the other interesting thing about this circuit is its uh, voltage uh, uh, regulation. Okay, so a lot of times you want to make sure that your uh, your voltage rail is very quiet. There's no noise on it. And so this has a, an RC filter. Okay, it has 100 ohms and 220 microfarads. Okay, and so they are um, buffering or filtering uh, the voltage before it's being used. Okay, so that's separate from the rest of the radio to try to keep things uh, very, very quiet, no noise at all on this first amplifier. It's very important that the first amplifier is very, very quiet. And so, uh, so they put that in here. Okay, so let's look for A. And here it is. Okay, so I'm going to hide this a bit. Um, and so this is kind of interesting. Again, it's AC coupled, AC coupled, in and out, or biased here, just as we were before. But take a look at this. This is really interesting. And each time the collector resistors get bigger, okay? So this first one has 22K, so not a lot of current through this one. And then the current's heavier in this one, 2.2K. And then here it's only 470 ohms. So we have current multiplication as we go across here. Uh, this one's able to... Uh, to handle a little bit of current, and then this one's able to handle more current, and this one's able to handle even more current. And uh, then we have the uh, 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 gain stage as it goes up and up and up. Now, um, you know, this one's going to have what's called beta, or some type of uh, current gain, current in and current out. This one has current in and current out, current in, current out. And each one of those can be anywhere from, say, oh, say 10 to 100, okay? somewhere in that range. Uh, so you can kind of have a current gain of somewhere between 10 and 100, 10 and 100, 10 and 100, something like that. Um, I don't know how this is designed, but those are, those are typical beta values. All right. And so um, 
in this particular thing, uh, each one of these transistors is going to uh, give its gain, okay? And each one of these resistor, uh, transistors is also going to have noise associated with it. So every time you, you increase the gain of something, you increase the noise, all right? And you can just, like, when you turn up the volume of radio, you're just turning up the signal and the noise, and it just gets noisier and noisier and noisier. So you want to make sure that you don't have much noise here because it's going to get amplified along the way. Well, not only is the noise that you have going to get amplified, but if this transistor has noise, then this transistor is going to amplify it. And if this transistor has noise, then this transistor is going to amplify these two transistors. And so it just gets worse and worse and worse. But luckily for us, there is a way to figure out, well, how much noise are we really going to get out of this? Is it really this times this times this, or maybe it's a different formula? And what we're going to talk about is something called noise factor. Sometimes you'll hear the term noise figure. Noise figure is just noise factor in dBs. So if you, you hear something called noise in dBs, that's noise figure. And then otherwise, it's just the general thing is called noise factor, OK? And so here's an equation that allows you to take a look at how do you add, if this has noise, and this has noise, and this has noise, we'll call it F1, F2, F3, how do they add? How does that noise add? Well, it adds like this. First of all, you're going to get all of the noise from the very first one. You can get all of that, plus you're going to get some of the noise from the second one, and you're going to get some of the noise from the third one. But they're going to be reduced. Um, the noise from the second one gets reduced by the gain of the first one, and the noise of the third one gets reduced by the gain of the second one. And so you can see that this is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so really, it's important that the first one be the one that has the very least amount of, of noise, because if this has a gain of 100, and then this, this noise is divided by 100, and then this one gets divided by 100, okay? And so it's important that you have as low a noise in the front as you can and as much gain in the front as you can, because then these two terms will get smaller and smaller and smaller. So uh, if we know this, then we can look at these three transistors and we can say, ah, if I want to buy a low noise transistor, it's expensive. Well, it's more expensive than, than regular transistors. So if we buy a fancy transistor for this first stage, and then we can use just a generic transistor for the two, two next stages, we're really spending our money wisely. We don't want to spend it on all three. We only need to have a special transistor in the front that has the low noise, all right? So let's take a look at that schematic again. And uh, here is our, not that one, this one. Here is our three transistors. And this is the transistors that are being used. It uses a 2SC1571 for this one. And then it uses, these two are the same. These are 2SC945s. And if you look up the data sheets, these are basically jelly bean uh, transistors. And this one is a fancy, expensive, very low noise transistor. So they spent their money wisely. They spent their money on this transistor, but then they use cheap transistors for the next two. So whoever designed that, it's very smart. And they knew about this and they designed it well.